what we're going to be doing today is uh, wiring the plow lights. Uh, right now, there's we have no connections to them at all, and I don't have the factory wiring. So what we're going to be doing is uh, is basically making our own wire looms. Uh, the factory wiring is pretty expensive. It's getting harder to find for these older trucks. And uh, I just uh, have a tendency to build my own anyway. So we're gonna be wiring in our own, uh, making our own wiring harness. Uh, I'll take you along and show you how I'm gonna do it. And uh, as usual, we'll be using recycled parts and, uh, and parts that are readily available so that you don't necessarily have to go and get expensive parts and pieces. All right, let's get started. Hey, right, first thing that we're gonna be doing is removing the headlights and uh, we're gonna start out wiring the clearance lights and the uh, signal lights. First thing we're going to do is uh, take the headlight unit out. The headlight unit on the, shivel, on the Silverados, or at least the older ones, uh, just pull these two pins out. If you watched how we uh, uh, restored this pickup, you've seen me do this before. And uh, then we just unplug here and we'll. Uh, We'll take the, uh, the clearance and signal light unit out. All right, the next piece that we got to take out is the, uh, the driving light, clearance light, and the signal light unit. There's a tab right down here. You can see my finger on it. You push that in, pop that out, and then we can unhook all of our, our wiring there and uh, what we're going to be doing basically for these lights is just tapping right into these uh, units here as you can see I've already tapped into them uh, I did this previously probably a year or so ago and uh, and ran a different set of lights here so these have already been tapped into one's a signal light one's a clearance light uh, and uh, we just run uh, there a what these are is a uh, what these are is a what they call a tap T tap uh, and they're they go on they clip over the wire they, they uh, self tap themselves into the wire when you squeeze them and uh, then there's a, uh, a quick uh, a plug-in that you can plug into these uh, to make them removable without actually removing these. Uh, what I do when I do this is I fill these with uh, dielectric grease. Uh, when, I, when I actually put them together, that keeps them from corroding. If you're hearing a lot of noise in the background here, it's our uh, blast heater that we've got here, uh, kind of trying to keep things warm. Uh, this is the beginning of November here, so or the middle of November, I should say, and uh, so it's a little chilly here in the shop. All right, I'm going to show you now. This is a uh, uh, not a self-grounding light, so you have to have a ground wire. The ground wire on this particular light is a is a white wire, so that's why we have this little short jumper here. And easiest way to find out which wire is what is to this is a, a jumper that's attached to the positive post and onto my uh, test light so I know I have power so I just touch that and trying to do this one-handed here that's the signal light and let's see here there's the clearance light. That, I believe, is the high beam. 
and the other wire here is going to be the, the low beam. So there's all of our wires. Now all we have to do is connect them up. What I did here, here's the, uh, the connection uh, with the slip on. Like I said, I use dielectric grease. I fill these cavities with dielectric grease. This is a, is a wire loom. And actually with a wire that I'm using is, uh, is a coated wire, or is a, uh, a, a wire that's got a tracer on it. Here's a black tracer. I'm gonna use the black tracer as uh, the clearance lights. The other light wire will be the signal light. And it's in, and I put it inside what they call a split loom, and uh, that split loom is available from Harbor Freight. It uh, comes with just like this. This happens to be a quarter inch by 14 foot. Costs a couple dollars, uh, so that works pretty good. Uh, the what I'm going to be using is a wire or is a uh, non-covered connector uh, that's used uh, a lot in uh, automotive uh, industry, in factory automotive industry, and then we'll be covering it with a marine heat shrink that as you heat this up, there's a chemical inside of it, like a glue, that softens and, uh, and goes around the connection and it seals it. This is also available from Harbor Freight, relatively inexpensively. So the connectors that we're going to be using are uh, from Rogo, that's a fastener company, and uh, the actual connectors, as you can see, none of them have a coating onto them, uh, so they're, they're just a, uh, uh, an uncoated crimp connector. Uh, I have several different types of, uh, of crimp pliers but there's actually a crimp plier that's available from uh, Harbor Freight that works with these. Uh, I have a snap-on one that looks identical to this. Uh, and uh, so uh, no reason to buy or, or pay all the money for a snap-on one. This one works just as well as the snap-on one. It's identical. So... Uh, that's, uh, that's how we're going to hook up the clearance and the signal lights. They don't need a relay into them. Uh, so I'll get this hooked up and uh, then we'll move on to the, uh, the headlights and a relay system and uh, show you how we're going to do that. All right, we got our clearance and our signal lights all hooked up. What we're going to, I'll try to explain how we hook up the these two lights, the, the lights on the truck and the lights on the plow, so that they'll work independently from other, one another. In other words, when I turn on the lights, or when the lights come on, it's, this has got an automatic sensor in it. Uh, so when the lights come on, and you have the plow on, you don't want the lights on the truck to come on because they'll hit the plow and they reflect back and it, it just, it's some, it can be blinding to you. So, you want just the plow lights to come on. So the way we hook these up, and well, the way the Chevrolet is, is the switch inside the cab is a ground switch. So in other words, when you switch from high, low to, from high to low beam, you're not switching power, you're switching ground. So this is the ground wire right here that goes to this light here. And these, uh, this has power all the time when the lights are on, okay? So what we're doing is this relay is going to have power all the time. And the relay has to have ground in order to work. So the relay is going to be switched ground not switched power. So what that means is that this switch up here, which is gonna go inside the cab, will be a ground switch as well as the, the switch that is factory. 
Okay, hopefully I can explain this so that it, it makes sense. So what we're going to do, I'll turn the lights on and uh, the lights will obviously will be on anyway. So this is this this is the obviously the the truck light, the factory truck light. Okay? So when I switch this that'll go off because it's lost its ground. That light has lost its ground, not its power, but lost the ground. And this has gained its ground. Not or, you know vice versa. In other words, this will have power all the time. That has power all the time. But now we're switching the ground, not the power. So all we do, then this is a, this is kind of the way the, the factory wiring setup would be. If I can switch this again here without the wires all falling out. There would be the truck there would be the plow and it's through ground not through power and that's the way our this is a relay now this relay is actually a stock Chevrolet relay so it's easy to get uh, you can get it go to any uh, automotive store or even a junkyard and uh, uh, take this relay out of you know a Chevrolet uh, power box. I can show you these. Uh, that relay is uh, is actually right in. These are those relays right there. There's three of them, and uh, so these relays I can pull one out and uh, out of like say a, a, a junk vehicle, and uh, and just uh, plug it into here and. Uh, I'll have uh, have the relay, so they're they're easy to get. They're, you don't have to buy a, an aftermarket relay. They're plenty heavy enough. They're made for these type of a situation, uh, and uh, so there it is. We'll uh, get to wiring this up and uh, show you the end result. Okay. So what I did is I had another power center from uh, another Chevy truck. Uh, that we used a lot of the parts for this truck for. Uh, so there's another power center there. So I took the power center apart and made a block that I can mount the, uh, uh, the relays on. And that also gives me, if I want to take and put some more plug-ins in, these plug-ins could be used for fuses in the future. If I wanted to add something that needed a fuse onto it, I can also fuse these. So I could add more wires to it. Uh, got a, a place to mount it. I can just put a screw down through the center of it and I'll, I'll mount it someplace underneath the hood and uh, it'll be relatively protected underneath there. I won't have to worry about moisture or uh, you know, bad weather getting to it, and uh, and I'll have a place for the two relays that I'll need for the high and low beam. Okay, so these are the the headlight wires, the high and low beam, and I want to be able to unplug these, but I also want the this plug-in to be waterproof because let's face it. This is a snow plow. It's right out in the wide open here. And this is where it's going to get covered in snow and ice and salt. And we want these connections to be good and clean. And uh, obviously, so they work. So this is the harness. It's coming from the relays. And we need to put a waterproof connector on these. So the connector that we're going to use is called a weather pack. And these are what they call weather pack terminals. Uh, it's a two terminal, what we're gonna be using on this one. So this is the, the one end, and this is the other end. And they get put together. There's obviously, you can see the, the weather uh, tight connections, uh, and they, they positively lock in together. 
they also have uh, these are on the other end that protect or, or seal the wire coming in and uh, these are the the connectors that go in the weather pack the different size wires so we're going to be putting these together I'll show you how we put these together and uh, these are used in a lot of uh, OEM uh, original equipment uh, connectors and different things and uh, so this is uh, th and these are by Rogo themselves uh, uh, this company has a, a lot of different fasteners and connectors and all kinds of different things so we'll get this uh, get these out and get them uh, ready and we'll show you how to put this together all right what we're going to be doing is building this weather pack terminal like I say you can see these kind of terminals uh, everywhere in automotive uh, use uh, by the factories and, uh, and stuff I've already slid the waterproof uh, part on the wire the wire part already on the on the wire here the other terminals this is how they, there is a special tool for this I'm not sure if you can uh, are able to rent these or uh, or any of that kind of stuff but they need to be uh, of a specific size and uh, onto them. And that goes down and we start crimping this. I do it a little at a time. I have to always look and see which, which terminal I want to use here. that down and we'll finish it up with this smaller one here this one here that wraps the wire and this part here gets squeezed around the insulation part. So we take this. That squeezes that down around that wire. Just laid in there like that. Let me get that just right, or otherwise it won't crimp exactly right. on that and for some reason these never really I have never gotten the hang of getting these perfect on the end it's not necessarily the the end of the world to not get this part here crimped in but it is just nice if you can all right so the terminals are on. I always do a tug test to make sure that I did have them get good and crimped. And here's the 
this is the female end. go in and they lock just like that. This particular one since I'm building brand new ones uh, it doesn't much matter where I happen to put these. These get pushed down inside of that cavity there. straight down in and then this is the last part that goes down that locks it in and you have a nice waterproof connector and uh, the next piece that goes on will be this one here it goes on this way and that rubber seal there takes and seals it there of course those rubber pieces in the back sealed it there so once this is clipped together, it'll be totally sealed. Even if, even with it being sealed, I always put dielectric grease. I'll fill this cavity with dielectric grease and, and plug it together. So this, this particular end here will go on here, and this will stay here, and I'll be able to unplug this because this part here, uh, this rig comes off the truck in the summertime and this part will stay, gets tucked up underneath the, the grill and uh, put away. So that's how we do the weather pack terminals and uh, uh, make a quick disconnect on the, uh, on the, for the lights. The, this particular one here, these, uh, these are on the inside. If you remember, I, I put these on the, the, the plug-ins on the other part of the light. Uh, and uh, so I can unplug these inside, which, as you see, it's a very simple five-second five deal to just pop these out, and unplug them, put them back in, and you're ready to go for the summer. It's only something that you do uh, basically twice a year. Uh, in the fall, when you get ready for winter, and in the spring, when you're taking them back off. All right. We've got the, the wiring job all done. Uh, our plow lights and truck lights are operating correctly. Our, we have our weather pack terminals so that we can unhook things. Uh, everything's run inside of a, of a loom. Weather pack over on this side. And everything is inside of a loom so that it's well protected. This is our little uh, block that we made. Uh, our power runs, this is uh, the, uh, the plow uh, solenoid, and this has got power here all the time, right from the, direct from the battery. So we, we ran our uh, power lines, our, our power lines that are hot all the time, uh, back in here to our fuses. Let's see if we can get a picture of it. We got two fuses there, one for each. Uh, uh, relay and then our hot wires are coming out and going to our lights on um, these are the plow lights and the rest of these are all the uh, switches uh, switch wires and uh, and that stuff all those run inside of a loom back in here and then run back in here we drilled a hole through the firewall put a grommet in ran these uh, these wires back down inside into the cab and uh, this wire here is, uh, is our light that's underneath the hood, uh, our temporary light that we just got. And if you can see, this is our switch here. That's, uh, that's truck and that's plow. And uh, when we turn the the truck on and let me see it's on the plow now we can see that the plow lights work and uh, I'll see if I can set you up here 
So that those are the plow lights. That's low beam. There's high beam. You switch it down. And you flip the switch. It goes down onto the truck. There's high beam. There's low beam. And everything works as it should. So there we are. Uh, the wiring harness for this with all of the solenoids and all of that stuff run in the neighborhood of 200 and some dollars. Uh, we used uh, uh, some relays that, and stuff that we got out of another truck. Uh, it didn't cost us anything for that. We, uh, the wiring there didn't cost us anything. This wire loom cost us uh, probably uh, uh, five dollars in the, in that area. Uh, a partial roll of tape, electrical tape. The weather pack terminals are about five to seven dollars a piece. Uh, and uh, the other wiring that we use, some of that wiring we actually took out of a donor uh, RV. Uh, so even the wiring didn't cost us anything. The six terminal switch that runs in the neighborhood of ten dollars or so so all in all if i have twenty dollars twenty well if i have thirty dollars probably if i have thirty dollars into it that's a lot so we saved ourselves a little money uh it was a interesting project for me figuring out the ground switches and uh and how to turn these uh relays on with the ground instead of power and uh, there we are, we're all set.